Okay. Alright, so we have what looks like a kind of a steel tank to kind of clear cell um, lobulated mass here. Kind of looks like adipocytes, but there's a little something extra to them. Um, just could think about angio or um, yeah, angiolipoma, but the vascularity isn't grouped um, quite that nicely. And then on higher power, you can see the adipocytes here have this like kind of vacuolization and a little bit of granular change. This looks like brown fat. Um, so in aggregate, this would be good for a hibernoma. Yeah, very good. And I like that you brought up the fact that, you know, there's a tendency where people want to say they see extra vessels in a fatty thing. And the first thought is, oh, let's call it angiolipoma. But all fatty tumors pretty much have a decent bit of vascularity to them because fat normally needs a lot of blood supply, right? Normal fat does to exchange the lipids in and out of the adipocytes through the, from the circulating blood, right? So that same thing is recapitulated when we have fatty tumors. They usually have an abundant vascular network. And sometimes people just don't, it's not always easy to visualize. And, in, and when you finally do see like, oh, wow, there's a lot of vessels here, uh, it can cause a little confusion. So I guess that's why this was added, even though what we're doing today is mostly vascular things and a few mimics. I, I personally don't really think of hibernoma as a vascular tumor mimic, but I think it's a good point that, that a rich background vascular network in any sort of tumor can sometimes make people incorrectly think of a vascular neoplasm. Like for example, say a solitary fibrous tumor. It has tons of vessels, but it's not a vascular tumor. It's a fibroblastic tumor of some sort that just has a bunch of vessels in it. Um, so here we see though, like you said, we see three types of, of fat cells, okay? We see mature white fat, the same kind we see in adults in the subcutis, regular fat, you know, basically. Then we see these bubbly vacuolated cells that look almost like lipoblasts, except they have small nuclei. They're not big, ugly nuclei, but they have the same kinds of vacuoles that you'd see in a lipoblast, lipid vacuoles, right? And then even though they're not abundant here, some cells have a granular, grainy, um, uh, kind of oncocytic looking reddish uh, pink cytoplasm. And that's because they're packed full of mitochondria. Um, and you can see variable amounts of that red graininess in the background of the bubbly cells too. So those three cells in varying proportion are what make up brown fat and a tumor of brown fat is a hibernoma. Sometimes it looks mostly like white fat and you just get a little bit of the vacuolated uh, cells and almost none of the, the bright pink or red granular cells. Okay, so it can really, the proportions can vary a lot. It, even though it gets taught in Dermpath, I'm not exactly sure why, because I personally have never seen a hibernoma in the skin. I don't think I've, I, I'm not even sure if I've seen a good example of one in the subcutis. The vast majority I've seen are like down deep in the muscle or, or, um, or yeah, basically the usually intramuscular masses on the proximal extremities of young adults. And I think they're important to know about for surgical pathologists and soft tissue pathologists because they are, can become kind of large, like in the eight or 10 centimeter range, like on the large end of what a lipoma would usually do. And on imaging studies, if they do an MRI, they look fatty, but they don't look like normal fat. And the reason they don't is because they're not made of just normal mature adult fat, like a lipoma. They have all this extra stuff. They've got hypervascularity and they've got a lot of these extra cells that have more substance in their cytoplasm. And that gives a different signal on an MRI. They can have some fibrous bands. They can have stuff that makes them look like a liposarcoma on imaging. And so it's a, a thing that could look concerning on an imaging study and totally benign uh, when we see it on path. And there are very rare times that liposarcomas can have some brown fat components, uh, like a well diff supposedly can. I don't think I've ever seen a good example of that in real life. And I have seen brown fat change in a high grade mixoid liposarcoma one time, but it, it had brown fat looking cells, but it did not look anything like a hibernoma. It looked clearly like a high grade sarcoma. So I would say that's a really rare thing. Uh, for practical purposes, if you see something that looks brown fat like this, it's either a hibernoma or it's normal brown fat. And again, almost always those things come from deep down. Sometimes you'll see normal brown fat around lymph nodes, particularly in kids, sometimes in adults as well. Um, so it's good to recognize so that you don't freak out when you see this. Oh, and by the way, these will be hot on PET scan so they can be discovered incidentally, either normal brown fat around lymph nodes or uh, brown fat tumors. They have a lot of mitochondria. So of course they're, they're metabolically active and they're gonna take up the uh, FDG and, and uh, give a, a hotter signal on a PET. So they're one of the things that can get incidentally discovered on PET. Let me, since we've sent the residents to clinic, let me show you another example of a much more robust 
So I reason I want to point this out is that they, they can look quite different from case to case, depending on how many of those red cells you get, the, the, the red granular looking brown fat. Look at that. If you don't like that, I can't make you happy. I mean, isn't that amazing? Those cells are very just loaded with mitochondria. And then you get the bubbly cells. Some of the bubbly cells have a little bit of the red granular mitochondria stuff, and then you get white fat. So it can really run a range from being more on the lipoma side and a little bit of brown fat to being much more on the brown fat side with very little of the mature white fat cells. Again, lots of vascularity. Look, even little capillary vessels. Don't, don't get worried about mixoid liposarcoma. Yeah, they're gonna look a little chicken wire because this is the kind of vessels that mixoid liposarcoma is making, but those are the normal vessels you have in the normal subcutis. And so it gets recapitulated. That's, that's the normal kind of vascularity that fat has. You just don't always see it as much until you're in a setting like this where they come closer together. So don't be afraid. The other thing I think sometimes people get freaked out about is they see the nuclei of brown fat. And because we don't see brown fat very often, most people are not um, attuned to thinking, what does normal brown fat nucleus look like? Well, look, it's a round, large nucleus with a big nucleolus. That's a normal brown fat nucleus to me. That is not atypia. Do not be afraid. That is a, that's a feature, not a bug. That's what it's supposed to look like. All right. They're uniform. They're not pleomorphic, big hyperchromatic cells, but they are bigger and have a prominent nucleolus, which is quite different than what white fat looks like, mature adult fat looks like, right? So I think it's important just to be aware of that so that when you uh, first notice that, and, you, and I only see hypernomas, I don't know, once or twice a year. I mean, they're not real common, or at least not in my practice. I don't encounter them that often. So, so a very beautiful and benign, uh, relatively uncommon thing to see. And again, I've not seen one in the skin, but if someone out there has, I'd love to see a picture of it. Thank you. All right. Now you've seen two flavors of hibernoma.